Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On Fire B2B podcast, a podcast where we take business owners and CEOs in the B2B space. Six questions, nine minutes, because the best know when to be concise and when to end. And let's get to it. Question number one, in a few sentences, tell us who you are and what do you do? Well, hi, I'm Paul Barton. I'm the owner and founder of phoenixpublicspeaking.com. And I work with business professionals who are basically fed up with public speaking being the reason that's holding them back. So what I do is I give folks the confidence to speak up and the skills so that they can really stand out anywhere, anytime. Love it, love it, Paul. Question number two, what is the best thing about working with businesses? Yeah, I get really uh, excited to work with folks and watch it, the transformation take place when they really find their own unique voice and really empower themselves to be able to deliver their messages. Perfect, perfect. Question number three. I'm hearing from other top executives that getting from decision makers is a challenge. What are your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I think in the beginning, we all find ourselves on the yellow brick road and we're all trying to find, get to the wizard, right? And we think there's all these gatekeepers that keep us from seeing the wizard. And we, we try to find, let's see, maybe we need more brains or maybe we need more <laughs> courage or whatever it is. And Eventually, we start to network and we start to nurture and we start to research and we get to find that place. But when we really find our sweet spot, we end up having those people trying to find us as much as we're trying to find them. Perfect. Absolutely there. Question number four, what advice you share with other companies working in the B2B industry? Go. Yeah, well, similar to the last question, I would say don't think that you're trying to find everybody in the world to be your client. The people that you're trying to find are the people who are trying to find you. <laughs> and so I go through a process to figure that out. It, it starts with figuring out what are you passionate about. And for me, it's, it's about communications and business. I was in corporate world for over 20 years. So I'm really passionate about that. I'm also a writer. I've written books and I, as a corporate communications person, I did a lot of writing. So I'm really passionate about the writing industry. So the second piece of that is to figure out who you're passionate about. And again, for me, it's those writers and those communicators. A lot of folks stop at step one. They figure out, here's what I'm passionate about, and they stop there. But it's not really about you. It's about your customers and finding that sweet spot. Step three, then, you know what you're passionate about. You know who you're passionate about. Now you need to know who are your clients. What are they passionate about? Okay. And then the fourth step is to figure out where do those three things intersect? What you're passionate about, who you're passionate about, and what they're passionate about. And once you find that intersection, you found the sweet spot and they will be looking for you as much as you're looking for them. Perfect, perfect. I love those four little steps there. Let's get to question number five. What other top CEOs and business owners in the B2B industry, like yourself, would you like to acknowledge as a leader and should be a guest on my podcast? Ah. I have a rock star client right now. Her name is Dina Turney. She started her own company all by herself a few years ago. She now has all tons of people working for her. She has an office in Honolulu. She has an office in Singapore and Australia and San Francisco. And what she does is she started off just deploying software, but then she found her sweet spot, which was deployment of Salesforce software. And she does that for both big and small business. So what makes Dina really cool and what would make her a great guest is finding a woman who owns her own business is pretty cool. Finding mm -hmm. a woman who owns her own business in tech is even cooler, but the coolest of all is finding a woman who owns her own business in tech who's a great speaker. So I think she'd make a great guest on your podcast. That, that is definitely a trifecta right there. I love that. But we got to get to question number six. Paul, most important question of the podcast. I need you to focus on this one. Hey, Paul. Tell me about your first time, your first sale. Well, there was that crazy summer in the cat skills, but oh, wait a minute, you wanted my first sale. All yeah, right. I, I was talking purely about sales, nothing else. I don't know why you went on a different, different road on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, my first sale, my first client uh, as a public speaking coach was a pretty interesting character that I'll always remember. He was a Phoenix firefighter, actually he was a paramedic as part of the Phoenix Fire Department. He'd worked there for probably 20 years, big strapping guy, six footer, pretty tough guy and, and had nerves of steel when it came time to going into a burning house and pulling out, you know, bodies, which may be alive or dead. But when it came time to deliver his daughter's 
wedding toast as the father of the bride. The guy was scared to death. <laughs> so he came to me, we got him up to speed, we gave him techniques, he got rid of his anxiety, he was able to deliver a really great message, and he ended up having so much fun with it, now he's in Toastmasters and he speaks all the time. That is awesome. That, that's really cool there. You got someone who was like a big burly guy and was able to get him to open up on speaking. That is awesome. Paul, you have three minutes and 45 seconds left. Promo time. Ask me a question. Talk about the weather. Or since the best of when to be concise and when to end, we end early. Go. Well, I'm just fascinated by people who have developed really strong personal brands and, and people who are just really comfortable in their own skin and, and they've really got it figured out, which is why I was so excited to be on this podcast, Bob, because you have figured out all of those things. So I would love to ask you about how you develop the personal brand and very specifically, what's the origin of the hat? Okay, so origin of the hat, I used to be a political consultant and I literally stumbled into it. Like people ask me, what did you do before being a political consultant? I was a professional couch bum. So that, that's, how, that, that's how big of a difference it was there. So I'm talking to my buddies and I'm not a famous name. So you, like my last name doesn't mean anything in politics. I don't have the degree and I'm not filthy rich. So I'm like, how do I get known? One of my friends who had a little too much to drink was like, man, you're gonna be like the mad hatter of politics, aren't you? I'm like, let's work with that. So I started wearing this hat and I don't know, I don't know if you've ever been to a political event and it doesn't matter the you know, right or left. Every single time you see someone you know, you have to do this. Hi. And I'm like, no, I refuse. So I wore the hat and I would go look at them and I would just do a little, just like that. And because of that, I got really known and that was part of the branding there. So, and then the other question you asked me was, how do I, you know, how did I build this brand? Uh, basically it was really talk to a couple of people because obviously in the online space, there's so many people that you know, they talk about, you'll know, be, be the teacher, you'll be the Yoda. And I'm like, but I'm not a, I am not a happy go lucky, you know, perky person. Like, I'm not going to tell you, I, you're great and wonderful if you're, if you're not, if that makes sense. So what he did was he's like, well, think of any movie, any TV, a TV or movie and think of your favorite mentor. And I'm like patches from dodgeball guys in a wheelchair. He's cranky. All he cares is that you're better at, you know, dodging balls. So again, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. So basically I was like, great. I don't have to, I can still be myself, be authentic and still give value. So that's the answer to that. Excellent. There we go. You do have one minute and 27 seconds left. Promo time. Do you want some? Sure. Yeah. I hope folks go out and check out my website. We have virtual one-on-one -on -one coaching and Zoom calls like this. Uh, we also have online courses so you can defeat public speaking once and for all right from your kitchen table or polish up your, your skills because, you know, it's harder than ever to engage people now that we're in a virtual world. It makes it even mm -hmm. tougher. So you need to have those skills sharpened even more so than before. And we can help you out. Love it. You pulled it off. Six questions, nine minutes. Because the best know when to be concise and when to end. Your website, say it. PhoenixPublicSpeaking.com. In the description, it's magic. Paul, thank you so much for being on. Tip of the hat to you. All right. And for everyone else watching or listening, make sure you check out more episodes of the On Fire B2B podcast. My name is Bob Clark. You all have a wonderful day now. There's the stop button. I found it. Talk to you later. Bye.